All right, what's going on, everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. So yesterday, Gamescom opening night live 2024 went down. Uh, I would have live streamed the event, but I have to go into work one day a week, and unfortunately, the one day a week that uh, I had to go in was the same time they were having this. So I didn't get to live stream it, and I'm not like too torn up about that. Like it was okay at best. There were a few announcements I was definitely excited about, but as it goes with most of these shows, most of it be shit. I don't give I don't give a damn about most of it be mid, um, you know. So I was I was still watching it while while I was in the office and everything like that. It was it was cool. All right, so I'm gonna go through. Well, not necessarily go through everything, but we're gonna we're gonna you know skim through. A lot of this because obviously a bunch of this shit I don't personally care about so we're not going to spend too much time on those all right um I got uh this is um IGN's list got a uh Eurogamer's list open of everything that was announced just in case there's anything that was uh either side misses all right so they opened up with a reveal trailer for B Borderlands 4 no gameplay of course <clears throat> Excuse me, just an announcement trailer. I'm very excited about this. I'm a Borderlands fan. Um, two is definitely peak. Three was a letdown in my opinion. But border, I believe they're they going to make a comeback with four. So I'm excited about this. Uh, release date is 2025 according to what I've seen next year. Not sure if I believe that though. I believe... Depending on, especially depending on what part of the year they're claiming they're going to be released, I feel like they could. This could get pushed back to 2026. I'm always very skeptical about when they claim they're going to come out. I don't know something. Just got a feeling it's going to be 2026, like in the spring or something like that. But we'll see. But I look forward to Borderlands. Um, <clears throat> Black Ops Six trailer for the single player campaign. I would really love to know the stats on how many people actually play the Call of Duty campaigns. Because I am one of them. I'm one of the very few people who don't play the multiplayer at all. I only play the single player. But I would love to see the numbers of... of it would be so interesting to see. Like There, there are probably people who have purchased Call of... Like a ton of people who have purchased Call of Duty who have never turned on the single player for a bunch of the, the games they own. They probably buy it every year. And I bet you there's a lot of them who've never touched a campaign. Like that campaign button, that new game button has never been touched. I would just love to see those statistics because I remember that coming up a bunch of years ago about developers are like, yo, the single player takes more money to make. People are mostly playing the multiplayer. Why are we even bothering? But <clears throat> COD, you know, COD makes so much money. It's like even if barely anybody plays a single player, it's like, eh. It's fine. Um, Goat Simulator is being remastered. I didn't even remember seeing that announcement. Okay, cool. I don't care. Dying Like the Beast. I'm excited about this because Kyle Crane is back. That was the original character in uh, Dying Light 1. Dying Light 2 still was just... And I'm not the only person who... who Thought this, right? Because I hyped up Dying Light 2. I'm listening. Dying Light 2 got, it got the potential to be it, it, you know, that game. Like, and, and te I thought Techland, I'm like, listen, they could become like a top five studio with Dying Light 2 if they do it right. But I, something was just off about Dying Light 2, man. I, I can, I couldn't quite describe it, but it just, it just wasn't as good as one. Something was off about it, man. Something was just wrong with the gameplay, the, I just wasn't really digging the open world, but maybe some things will change for Dying Light the Beast, um, and we get to play as Kyle, you know Kyle Crane again. And I'm interested to see what what what's different because this this I think this is going to be like a smaller game. I think they said this is going to be like 20 hours or something like that. So it, it's not going to be as you know unwieldy as as Dying Light Two. Um, it's going to be like a, a shorter, tighter experience, and I'm excited about that. So that's definitely something I will be picking up. Um, yeah, excited about that. 
Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. Y'all know I don't give a damn about no Dragon Ball. Uh, King of Meat. What a wild name. King of Meat is a new co-op combat game where you, uh, up to four players endure goofishly designed dungeons. I don't even remember if I actually saw the trailer for that. King of Meat. Uh, where is Let's See if I can. Oh, this looks like co-op Fall Guys almost or something. Almost looks like co-op Fall Guys, I think. I'm not I'm actually not mad at that. Look like it could be fun. I don't know. All right. Linked Banner of the Spark. Why don't they have Oh, this is it. Link Banner of the Spark. I did look for some reason I don't want to click on IGN's uh For some reason I just don't want to click on IGN's videos. Oh, that's why. Because it has ads. Something told me I wouldn't I, something told me I didn't want to click on their damn videos. Uh maybe I should work from from here. Uh I don't know if this is in a slightly different order. Slightly. Persona 3 Reloaded DLC. I don't care about Persona, but that re Fantasio. Metaphor re Fantasio. That's, that's how you say it, right? Re Fantasio. I actually look forward to that because um, none of the school aspects are in that shit. Um, Black Myth Wukong. The new phenomenon out right now. I haven't gotten a chance to play it. I will be playing it on PC. It's got like two, it had like two million concurrent players. Uh, statistics did point to a lot of those were from China. Still, nonetheless, it's helping the game gain popularity because people are seeing the numbers. And listen, if you don't think that the industry is going to take notice and be like, yo, look at all these, look at all, all the purchases this game got from that audience. There is a lot of untapped market over there. And I know PlayStation, because PlayStation has that uh, that China Hero project going on, where they're help funding a whole bunch of projects from China. Listen, Sony about to put a hurry on a bunch of those games. They they like yeah, we need to get this out tomorrow, next year. They're gonna put a, a rush on some of those games, <clears throat> especially that game that's been in development. I want to say since the end of the PS3. What's that game? The Devil May Cry. Look, man, that joint been in development forever. I know it's like. It was like one guy working on it originally, and it and it's still a small team. Yeah, they need to get that out. So yeah, I will be playing Black Myth Wukong when I get a chance. As I said, I don't give a damn about Dragon Ball Sparking Zero or King of Meat. Linked Banner of of the Spark. What was this again? Oh yeah, some colorful, uh, some colorful bullshit. Yeah, no, no, no comment. And this was Lost Records, Bloom and Rage. This looks like looked like a Jack move game to me. One of those games where you play as an angsty uh, female teenager interacting with her friends. Yeah, that life is strange type of bullshit. Yeah, I'm not into it. <clears throat> No more room in hell. Yeah, I watched the trailers for these and I just don't remember them. Um, no more room in hell too. Uh, eight player permadeath co-op horror game. Eight player permadeath. Wow. Okay. Hmm. Another one of those left for dead back for blood except in first person type things uh the zombie shooters zombie shooter genre so arc raiders got revealed a while ago right um like three years ago i want to say maybe two and all they really did was give us uh we didn't really see much more gameplay in this trailer they just say coming 2025 like okay bro thanks Infinity Nikki, yeah, don't care about that. Space Marine 2, I'm getting the deluxe edition for this game. I'm going to do a playthrough. Some people have asked me. I'm going to do a playthrough for this game. Um, I might live stream me playing the first game because I bought the anniversary edition. Um, 
so maybe I might live stream me playing beating the first game also. I'm not sure, but I will I will beat it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna live stream it. Space Marine 2, I'm gonna do a playthrough. I'm gonna be playing the multiplayer, all that good stuff. Uh Predecessor, which is Paragon, the revival revived version of Paragon. People like to make a lot of jokes about this because yes, this is the game where I was invited to Epic Games to play and test out. Uh the yeah, it's a MOBA shooter. And then um People claim I just abandoned the game after that, after they gave me a whole bunch of, uh, you know, merch and stuff. I abandoned the game. Not true. It's not that's not what happened. Let's move on. That's all I'm going to say about that. Path of Exile 2. No comment. Dune Awakening. Uh, this MMO looks looked mid to me. <laughs> I mean, it, it looked this looked very PS three-ish MMO to me. Um, it's not something I'll be playing. Reanimal. Uh, I remember, I think this game actually caught my eye. This was like the horror game that's uh, very, it reminded me of a little bit of Limbo, uh, Little Nightmares, that type of vibe. Yeah, I, li I like this. This looks cool. I like this. That game looked cool. Uh, Genshin Impact is coming to Xbox. Don't care. Monster Hunter Wilds. Personally, I don't care. Not into Monster Hunter. Fatal Fury. Yeah, I don't care. Mecha Break. This game seems to be gaining a lot of a lot of fandom. Um, I think a lot of people are actually excited about this game. Um, it seems like a cool mech game. It does. I'm not I'm not hating on it at all. It seems like it's actually going to it'll probably be actually pretty popular. So. Uh, closed beta coming to Xbox end of this month and the full release is going to be 2025 Monument Valley. What the hell is that? Oh, no, don't care. Civilization seven. Yeah, don't care. Starfield, Shattered Space, don't care. Yeah, they're getting vehicles. Cool for them. Shout out to them. Happy for y'all. Don't care. Marvel's Rivals. We getting um, Captain America and Winter Soldier. Um, I like Marvel's Rivals, as y'all know. And it's got a release date, December 6th. So there's a, there's a, a good number of games coming out in, in December. And December is typically a month where you want to avoid dropping certain games avoid yeah releasing certain games it's it's okay for marvel's rivals because marvel marvel marvel's rivals is going to be free to play so it is going to be free to play right yeah um so you can drop this in december that's that's no problem but december is typically not the greatest month because even though there's less games dropping it's like the time after everybody has done the mass holiday shopping and less people are spending so usually in the past, they've avoided dropping games in December for that reason. Uh, but yeah, Winter Soldier looked cool. Captain America looked cool. Like he can actually block projectiles with his shield, which makes God, a lot of goddamn sense. Um, just like I said, this game just has so much potential and it's so easy for them. You know, you know how, it, 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 like I said, the whole creative part of of create of this of this uh you know th th this game is done for them it it's already created since the, because the marvel ip is just so established so whatever type of character you need to add to the game it's already there for you you have thousands of characters to choose from popular obscure all types you know um i will say they do need a more they need more um uh, like just just the, just the close range melee characters, and I think Wolverine. That's they definitely need to add Wolverine pretty soon, because Cap. Like most of the characters, in my opinion, so far, I, I think most of them are kind of range characters. You know, obviously Bucky is. You know, he's gonna have his guns, but some of his move sets are close range. Cap is gonna be throwing his shield. They need more of those, uh, close range, um characters and they they need to be good because right now if you play a melee character you're kind of like at a disadvantage you know and they still got to do some balancing but yeah i look forward to playing this in december excited for that
secret level. So I didn't so I, I didn't get to look at the full trailer for this. So I'm cuz so I'm not fully understanding what this is. So this is going to be so it's an anthology TV show um and it's going to take from several games. So each episode is going to be about a different game so but is it is it a document documentary on those games or what that's the part i'm not sure about like sifu was in there god of war was in there um is it going to be like short animated episodes of these characters That's the only thing I'm I'm not sure about because does that mean we're getting like short and a short animated uh episode for all of these for all of these IPs? That would be really cool. And th- and we could also like know like what the potential is for these games being actual like sh- animated shows. So we'll see. Um Age of Mythology retold. I won't be playing that, but all respect to Age of Mythology. Towerborn. This is a game that I swear Xbox dudes have been talking about forever. And then the game doesn't even get an Xbox release date. It gets a. Didn't it get like a. What was it? An early access date for PC? And then it said coming to Xbox later on or something? Let me see. Yep, coming 2025. Wait, okay. Okay, early access begins September yeah, September 10th this year. Early access on PC and then it's coming to consoles, Xbox consoles in 2025, which I saw a lot of Xbox dudes were unhappy about because bro, why are you treating the console gamer like this? Hey man. Xbox been telling y'all what they think about y'all, so uh Delta Force Hawk Ops. I'm trying to get into this. Or I'm trying to get into this. Uh, this closed beta or whatever it is, because I've heard a lot of good things about this. People saying that it's you know, it's fulfilling their, you know, their battlefield desires. The game still needs a lot of work. Um, and I saw a trailer for this game that was like stuttering. I'm like, how was the trailer stuttering? I don't know if it was the trailer they released or just that actual video that the channel uploaded i don't know but yeah i'm trying to get into that I'm trying to get into this i want to play it it doesn't even have controller support right now i heard so if you don't use the mouse and keyboard you're screwed King, kingdom come deliverance 2 don't care zenless zone zero don't care honkai Star star rail about to say steroid don't care batman arkham shadow yeah only on meta quest 3 not even coming to psvr sad for psvr and I'm I'm just sad for Batman in general. Like this man is fighting the Rat King. We people want a new a new actual Batman game, and they're relegated to just looking at this Batman VR game that's only on MetaQuest Three. Sad times. <coughs> Little Nightmares Three. I never played any of the Little Nightmares games. Just never got into them. Uh, Herdling, don't care. Masters of Albion, don't care. Squid Game Unleashed, don't care. Unknown Awakening. Uh, what the hell is this? The TV show? I look like a TV show at first. Oh, this is a game? It's time to awaken your inner Assassin's Creed again with this trailer for Unknown 9 which also finally dropped a release date of October 18th. Eh, seems interesting. Got to see more. Arena Breakout Infinite. Yeah, no. Diablo 4, don't care. This game looked interesting. The first Berserker, Kazan. I like the way this gameplay was looking. Hardcore action. RPG. Yeah, this this was looking right. Yeah, this was this was this was looking right. Uh 
in early 2025. Yeah. Um, who, who's the developer of this? Doesn't say. Yeah, but it's a it's a nice looking hack and slash. Aura history untold. Yeah, no comment about that. Darker and darker mobile. Don't care. Floatopia. Don't even remember what that what the hell that is. I'm sure I don't care. Midiana Jones and the Great Circle. So, what they did here was nasty work. This was nasty. Xbox, listen, Xbox fans, y'all don't deserve this. Y'all, I'm, I, I'm being serious when I say y'all, know, y'all don't deserve to be treated like this. This was, this was not nice. This was nasty behavior from Microsoft. So, this is the game that we heard rumors of that was going to come to PlayStation 5, going to be announced for PlayStation 5. But the way they did it was just so disrespectful. They revealed the release date for Indiana Jones for Xbox and PC, which is December 9th. And then they announced the PS5 release date as a one more thing. You know how disrespectful that is? Please understand the history of. And one more thing. One more thing has always been used, excuse me, my voice, as the moment when you're leaving the audience with a shocking megaton banger announcement. That's what it's always conventionally been used for. Using the one more thing to announce that your first party game is going to the opponents and granted they're not competing with PlayStation anymore they've they've you know waved the white flag still your competitions that uh, now using the one more thing as a moment to announce that your first party game is going to the competitors platform is disgusting i don't condone it Even as a PlayStation fan, I don't condone it. That is nasty. Why would you do that is nasty? Mm -mm Mm-mm-mm. I I have... That is gross. That is not how you're supposed to use one more thing. You have destroyed one more things. Like, the the, the value of it. The the moment itself. Just the tradition of one more thing. That that's your one more your this this is another statement from Xbox that this happens to be your one more thing moment. Hey, one more thing, it's PlayStation. <laughs> what? <laughs> Xbox's one more thing is PlayStation. That is like every once in a while, every few months, Xbox finds a new way. To wave a bigger white flag. The whitest of white flags. If you thought the white flag before was white. And if you thought it was pretty big. No this this flag is gigantic. And it's Clorox bleach white. The whitest of whites. Like I'm talking about albino white. I'm talking about like. (sighs) Trying to think of like the whitest. White person in in history, like I I don't know. It's it's bad. It's disrespectful. Xbox Xbox fans, y'all deserve better. Abandon this platform, please. I don't want to see y'all go through this anymore. I care about y'all. Just abandon. I mean, technically, if you get rid of your Xbox, I mean, it's not like there's that many purchase Xboxes out there anyway. And people are, are slowly buying them less and less. But you're not even abandoning Xbox if you go to PC because you're still keeping your... They're still technically... I, I, I get confused about how, you know, that whole shit works. If you, you know, their, their Game Pass library and if they buy shit on um, Xbox, do they also have the PC version that buy it everywhere shit? Either way, bro... Just start buying your your games on PC through the Xbox store or whatever you got to fucking do. Just abandon this whole Xbox 
mindset. You know, this this whole Xbox rhetoric, this whole Xbox ecosystem, specifically the, the console, the physical console, just abandon that shit, bro. Y'all deserve better. Find somebody who who loves you. Um, but aside from that, I don't give a damn about Indiana Jones. I don't care that it's coming to PlayStation. I'm not buying it. Indiana Jones to me looks ass. This this is mid Deanna Jones to me. This game does not look good. And I'm a fan of machine games. I'm a fan. And this game looks ass to me. All right. Uh, Mafia, the old country. I look forward to this. I want to I, I just hope they improve the gameplay. I'm a Mafia fan, but I've only been able to beat one Mafia game. And that's Mafia 2. I've tried to beat. um. Because I, I, you know, I never played Mafia 1 when it first came out. I got into it at Mafia 2, and by the time I got to Mafia 2, Mafia 1 was too old. Couldn't go back to it. So, beat and loved Mafia 2. Mafia 3, that gameplay, and that, that just, the, the whole cycle. Oh, man, that, 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 that gameplay is just pretty bad. The story's always been fire. All the stories have been great. But the, the, the gameplay just suffers, and it's, it's, it's not great. Um, and that's, that's the major thing. They just need to fix it. Bro, if, they, if Mafia fixes their gameplay, they could be like, I think like some of their games would and could be like game of the year contenders. Because that's the only thing wrong with their games. Even the remake of Mafia 1, that shit was pretty janky to me. I couldn't, I couldn't even play that. Like, just the shooting and the... And the controls, it, it was bad, bro. So, I'm, you know, Hangar 13, I'm hoping they make some major improvements. And they're going back to, so this is going to be like, almost like a prequel. It's going back to the origins of Mafia. You know, so, I guess going back to, you know, I guess the old country, going back to the origins in Italy or something, you know, wherever the fuck. Um where it all started. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, oh shit. Was that it? <clears throat> Let me, uh, skim through this too. Hmm. <sighs> Yeah, I think, think it looks like I covered everything. So, overall, I wouldn't say it was a terrible show. I always grade these shows, like, well, sometimes I grade these shows on, on, a, on a curve in my mind because I already know 75% of it ain't going to be for me. So, if I come away from a show with, like, five games I'm really interested, I know I'm going to buy, that's a win for me. Because I'm not one of these dudes who like some of these dudes watch these shows and be like, oh, everything was fire. Everything was great. Eh. You know, sometimes it'd be like one or two games at most in these shows that I slightly be interested in. So there's a there's a there's a good number of things shown here. I was like, yeah, that's 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 for me. That's for me. So. Let me see. Is there anything I missed? There was a lot of discourse going on Twitter yesterday. Pretty fun time. Pretty funny time yesterday on Twitter. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I def. I'm. I'm. I had no idea that uh, Black Myth Wukong. It released yesterday at 10 p.m. on the East Coast. I'm like, man, I was in. I was in bed. I was like, man, I didn't know this shit was releasing at that time. I was in bed at that time, man. Or I would have I started it. And my thing is, like, when I, when I play games now, <clears throat> when I play games now, I don't like starting a game unless I have enough time to play it for at least two hours straight. So if I got an hour to play a game, I just won't do it. I'm like, no, an hour. Like, playing a game for an hour is like just getting your feet wet. Right. So if I if I have to play for if I have enough 
If I have an hour, I'm not going to play it. I need at least two straight hours where I just have an open time slot to just play a game. If I have 30 minutes, I'm not playing an hour, not playing an hour and a half, still not playing. I need two solid hours because I do not want to be interrupted, man. I want to get immersed into that game. I hate like this intermittent start and stop gaming, you know, like. I don't know if that's just be me becoming like an old man, because like before, listen, bro, if I had 10 minutes, I would play a game and 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 then go do what I got to do and come back. And, and pick it up nowadays no no i need i need two free hours before i start a game two free uninterrupted unbothered hours oh yeah troy baker is indiana jones oh, man listen like i said like i said on twitter um i just feel like he's a bit overused especially for these type of roles i feel like they just kind of overuse him like, bro, there, there are other actors in the industry. Give somebody a chance. Uh, yeah, we're about to see a lot more Chinese game development, which uh, I'm definitely down for. Xbox fans on, on watch. On you know what watch. I don't want to say it. Could get the video demonetized. Um, I gave Xbox fans some fake hope. Because I'm like, listen, it's not Gears, Forza, or Halo. See, those are that that's the holy trinity, right? With the angels guarding them. The angels have a have a an aura, a shield around those three games. Now, once that that shield is pierced and broken, then everything is going. Nothing is safe. Nothing is really safe now, if I'm being honest. But I'm just saying, once that shield has been penetrated, oh, yeah, give it all up, bro. Give it all up. Those, the, the, those are the sacred ones. And once you put those on another platform, yeah, bro, it's a, it's a rap, it's rap city. Indiana Jones, it's like, you know, you know. It's a, it's a new game, which is... and it, it, and one thing I forgot to mention, this is it's it's so funny because this is reminiscent of the Tomb Raider situation. Because remember, Rise of the Tomb Raider, which was probably about 10 years ago. This is reminiscent of that situation, except it was intentional this time because Rise of the Tomb Raider was was a timed exclusive for Xbox. Right. But of course, they didn't want anybody to know that. And I forgot how it actually leaked. That it was coming to PS, that it was coming to PlayStation, uh, in, in the sp the spring after that fall. But obviously, that was that was a fucked up situation. That's not what they wanted. They didn't want people to know that. The point of a timed exclusive is for people not to know, so that you know they don't they don't they can't say, oh, I'm gonna wait, and they just buy it, you know, on the available platform, so you could take advantage of that situation. But if people know when the time exclusivity is up, obviously, they oh, I'll just wait. Some people will be like, oh, I'll just wait. S fast forward now, Xbox did it to themselves, where they told you for their own first party, see that, and that was a third party game, and it was done to them by somebody else. This is a first party game, and, it's, and, it's, and they're doing it themselves. How times have changed in 10 freaking years. Like, this would have been considered just blasphemous 10 years ago. This, this, this would have been, some, somebody would have said they are being sabotaged, because that's what, how people looked at it back then. Somebody sabotaged them and did them wrong. They were wronged with Rise of the Tomb Raider, because they didn't even, you know, like, that would, they, they, were, they were wronged. And now, they're like, oh. We'll do it ourselves. So wild times we're in. Very wild times we're in, bro. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. It's it's for whoever are for how many Xbox fans are still ho actually holding on to hope and uh, holding the line. No matter, regardless of how <laughs> weak that line may be 
and how weak the defenses now may be because Xbox has given you Xbox has been tearing down their own defenses. They still have this little bit of hope to hold on to just a, just a thread because it's not Halo Gears and Forza. They can announce every other game. Every other they can announce every other game is going to Xbox. It could be Starfield, it could be Indiana Jones, it could be Fable, it could be whatever. The moment it's Halo Gears and Forza, all hope is lost. What is it? A worry die? Yeah. That's when you know it's officially over over. Until then, y'all, y'all, y'all hold on. Y'all keep the hope. Just that tiny bit of hope. Y'all hold on, man. So, yeah, that's all I got. Um, let me know what y'all think about this. I will catch y'all on the next video. Check out Weapon Wheel this week. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm out. Peace.